morning and welcome to St. Matthew's Episcopal Cathedral on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Glad you're able to join us this morning. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us, and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is taken from Numbers chapter 24, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea, to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way, the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm number 107. Let us say it together in unison. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Our second lesson today is taken from Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, 
following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work amongst those who are disobedient, all of us once lived among them in passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have saved through faith, and time is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us sing together, What Wondrous Love Is This? It's hymn number 439. Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believed in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe 
are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Several years ago, I went on a tour or pilgrimage of the cathedrals in England. It was a wonderful trip, a wonderful tour to see all of the grand structures that had been built up around the lands. Grand structures that reached so high that had wonderful architecture. But one of the biggest side trips that we made was going to be a time of stopping at the Pilgrim's Way, a pilgrimage trip or pathway that many would take from Winchester to Canterbury, Canterbury Cathedral. It was 119 miles long. Well, we weren't certainly going to make the 119 mile trip, which could be done on foot or by bicycle. But we stopped 20 some odd miles away from Canterbury and we decided we would start the walk there just to get an idea of the walk that so many pilgrims had taken and still take to this day. We all filed off of the bus. There was a group of priests and we took pictures near a sign that said the Pilgrim's Way, we were quite excited and as we all began we began to get spaced out. Some walked very quickly, some walked a little more slowly. Lots of chatter and talk about how wonderful it was to walk this way, and then it began to turn to looking at the grounds around us and the hills and the slopes and the, the, the rocks that we needed to walk over, maybe some obstacles that we had to cross, some roads crossing over those, watching for traffic occasionally. Then silence came upon us all as we hunkered down and really got into our trip. The bus driver had told us this particular trip, our guide actually told us this particular part of the trip was only about four miles long, I believe, not very long, and that he would meet us on one of the other bits so he could pick us all up again and we would continue our trip to Canterbury. Well, after the silence had begun and we were walking on our trip, it was longer and longer and longer of a trip. Surely we thought we must have traveled the amount of few miles that we were supposed to go. We would come to a road, cross the road, continue on the trail. Thinking there must be not much longer to go, we've been traveling for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, two hours, two and a half hours. We should have been there by now. And we kept walking and everybody turned to, well, I would say everybody, everybody around me turned to grumbling about how long is this supposed to take? Have we made a wrong turn somewhere? We would find a sign that kept telling us this is the pilgrim's way and we would stay on the path, but we kept thinking there must be something wrong. Along the way, a couple did drop out to decide that they were going to sit at the place where they were and call the bus to come and get them. They were exhausted. They were tired. But we carried on. We kept going and we kept walking and walking and walking until finally everybody caught up with everybody else. And we were all in this area and we thought, there's no way. This has only been just a few miles. We've gone too far. So we called the, the bus driver, and the bus driver said, I'm waiting. The guide with him said, we're waiting for you. We are in the spot. Well, they had 
gone to a different spot than we were thinking, and they had gone to a different spot than they were thinking. They hadn't realized they had gone many, many miles away. And they turned around and they came and picked us up, and we were all weary and all still grumbling about the experience until later that day we reflected back on both the humor of it and the beauty of the trip. When traveling on a trip, I know especially I do these days, I have certain expectations. I know where the end point is going to be. It especially helps when I have my phone that tells me how long it's going to take to get there at my current speed that I'm traveling. I have an idea and I have a set idea in my mind of how long this is going to take, where I'm going, how this is all going to work out. But our story today from Exodus tells us, excuse me, from Numbers today, tells us that that trip for those Israelites coming out and following Moses wasn't what they expected, wasn't as easy as they thought it would be. They began after time to complain about not having food, not having water, complaining that this wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. This trip wasn't what they thought it was going to be. And they began to complain against God and began to complain <clears throat> against Moses. And God sent serpents into their path. They had Moses pray and they apologized to Moses and asked Moses to pray for them to the Lord God to tell God they are sorry for the way that they acted and they want to continue on their path again. Well, God had Moses lift up a stick with a serpent on it, and if they were bitten, they would look at the serpent, and they would be cured, they would be healed, they would not die, and they would continue on. I think in our lives, we have an idea of what most of our paths are to be like, what our life in Christ is to be like, what our journey in following Jesus is to be like, and what it is in how we worship God and how we follow God, we get a sense throughout our lives of what that is supposed to look like. The reading that comes right before our gospel reading from John today is the reading where Nicodemus meets Jesus in the dark. He asks Jesus, out of curiosity, who he is, what he's doing, what's going on. And Jesus tells Nicodemus that he is here for a new way, a new life, to steer things a little bit more differently than what Nicodemus was used to, to look at things a little bit more differently on how God is worshipped, on how we should love our neighbors, on how we should preach the good news to others. Jesus let Nicodemus know that, that he needed to change, that he needed to be born again, that his life needed to become something new for him to have new life, of which Nicodemus, of course, was a bit confused about him. How could he be born again and how could he have new life? But Jesus tells us that with his coming, that with the coming of Jesus, with the coming of the only Son of God, through Jesus, we would learn what it is to have new life. And now by new life means leaving behind that path that we thought we might be following, leaving behind the grumblings and the pain, leaving behind the serpents that might be attacking us as we've gone through life, leaving behind all of those objects, as Paul tells us, of the flesh, those things that draw us away from God and begin on the new path, the new way, to begin the way of the pilgrim anew, the way through new life. Today, as we celebrate our fourth Sunday in Lent, and as we become closer and closer to the time that Jesus is lifted up high on the cross. 
closer and closer to the time when we are feeling like we are bogged down by the current path we're on, when we feel like we are being held back, like we are being bitten by serpents, like we are becoming drawn down by this current life, that we only have to look at the cross and Jesus upon it to know that we have new life. We only have to look at Jesus upon that cross and know that that old path is behind us and that new life is in front of us. Just as Moses lifted that serpent up and the people looked at the serpent and lived, we are to look at Jesus Christ and to live. We are walking on our path closer and closer to that Friday when we see Jesus on the cross. We are walking closer and closer to a time when we realize that we have new life. During these remaining times of Lent, as we begin to walk closer to our Holy Week, begin to walk closer to that celebration at the table on that last night, begin to walk closer to that path that Jesus took down the walk with his cross on his shoulder before he was lifted up like the serpent. As we get closer to that, let us start to look at those things in our lives that we need to leave on that path behind us, that we need to let go of, that we need to forgive, that we need to not have be part of our life and part of our path anymore. Because we are on the path through Jesus Christ. We are on the way of Jesus Christ. So that when we get there, when we get there on that Friday in a couple of weeks, we are ready. We are ready to look up at Jesus on the cross and know that it is through Jesus that we have new life and that we begin and have begun this new path in our lives. My friends, let us take a close look at ourselves. See what it is that's on the path behind us that needs to stay behind us and look to the path in front of us to the glorious hope, resurrection, and life that Jesus Christ offers to us. Amen. And now let us sing together our hymn, Blessed Jesus at Thy Word, hymn number 440.
let us say now together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us lift up our own intercessions. Let us say our prayers of the people. When our faith is weak and our hopes seem empty, come to us, Spirit, and fill us again. You are rich in mercy, and our need is deep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us to let go of the burdens we carry, the shame, the unrealistic expectations. Lead us to depend on you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide each of us in the decision-making of our common life, in our family relationships, our churches, and our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pull us closer to our compassionate heart. We pray for those in pain, for those who worry, for those whose livelihood is fragile, for those who grieve. We pray for Mary, Chris, John, Shar, Kathy, Kayla, Deb, Helene, Christy, Kenley, Rosemary, and Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Push us into the world to be the advocates for your expansive love among all the creatures you have created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive those who have died into the arms of your abundant mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people and what we have asked faithfully. Grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now keep this family, Lord, with your never-failing mercy, that relying solely upon the help of your heavenly grace, they may be upheld by your divine protection through Christ our Lord. And may all the blessings of heaven be upon you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.